<laughs> As you can see, we're still screwing around on the California Zephyr. It's sort of like a rolling parte. Yeah. There's some people here have booze. Not us. No, they us. clap we for us. We're key toddlers. <laughs> well, most. No, they clap for us. That kind of boo. That kind of boo. 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 Yeah. People say, you want a hand? They say, sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, look, it's the train station for Mac. Yes. Now, that reminds me, that train station right there is the train station for Mac, Colorado. That is where this railroad used to meet with mm -hmm. the Uinta Railway. Wow. A really neat narrow gauge railroad that went up into the Uinta Basin mm -hmm. to get Gilsonite. Oof. So I think we should go chase that grade. I think we should I too. I think we should take you guys along with us. Absolutely. So check this out, the Uinta Railway. Yeah. So the old train station at Mac is in pretty good shape. Doesn't look like they're actually using it anymore. Oh, wow. Look at that. Isn't that cool? I love the style. The railroad is long gone, but interestingly, the chain link fence around here is built out of old salvaged rail. <laughs> it's really light That's rail, cool. yeah. too. No I, I was really shocked. But, but when you see these really light, narrow gauge engines parked next to a monster real life <laughs> locomotive, which is a small locomotive, you realize what a tiny Boy, railroad. They are tiny. Look at that. They look like toys, yeah, which toy. is cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is live cool. steam. The railroad proceeded from Mac across the face of the Book Cliffs to Baxter Pass, where it actually headed up into the mountains and up to the Uinta Basin. Wow. Now check this out. This is a, an articulated engine, a Mali. And I always figured these things to be huge, you know, I mean, like the big boy they isn't articulated. <laughs> but look at that guy leaning against it. <laughs> these things are teeny. They're not uh, big at all, are they? Each of the engine sections is about the size of a pickup truck. Oh, my gosh. They needed a weird engine like this on this weird railroad. Notice that the coal is right here in the cab with the crew. Only <laughs> holds about a half a ton of oh coal. Oh my goodness. And then the water was originally stowed in these big tanks right above the drivers to help press down and put tractive force on the, the wheels. <laughs> Unfortunately, as they used the water, the thing started slipping. Oh dear. So they just left the water in those tanks. And you can see here they've added four water cars so that they can use the water in those cars rather than the water in the tanks. Oh my, look at that. This is actually a test track they built at Baldwin to make sure these things could go through these stupidly sharp curves. That's why they built them articulated because there were 80 degree curves oh on this railroad. Gosh. Look at this. And these were on seven and a half percent grade. Oh my. Seven and a half percent seven grade. And, half percent. and an 80 degree curve equates to about 150 feet across. Oh dear. This is probably the most famous of those curves. It's called Morrow Castle, 80 degree curve on seven and a half percent grade. Wow. And think of that, trains, not, not cars and trucks, trains went down this oh, thing. Oh my goodness. Now, between Baxter Pass and Mac, uh, there's a lot of just empty grade, and it's loaded with artifacts. Isn't that cool? I mean, we were finding stuff all over the oh, place. Oh, it was so much fun, too. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, Another the trick spike. here is on most of these railroads, we look all over to find a spike or something. On this grade, the trick is not tripping over it. Uh, right. Because there's ties and, and just stuff everywhere. Yes. This is our friend Adam, the conductor from our train. And uh, he went out with side. us to chase grades and picked up a few bits and pieces for himself, too. <laughs> Who could blame him? But there's a whole lot of this kind of level grade before you get to the bottom of Baxter Pass. Yes. Now, this is the summit of Baxter Pass. I went up there a few years ago with Steve. Uh-huh. And you and I need to get up there. Yes, because we do. Because you need to see this. This no is just kidding. amazing. Wow. But from the summit down to the engine shops at a place called Achi is where all this just impossible grade oh, is. Oh, my goodness. So heading back toward Mac from the top of Baxter Pass. Wow. And here is Morrow Castle. Shh. 
And as you can see, it's it's now it's just the road. Yeah, it's the road. If you go over <laughs> Baxter Pass, you're oh. driving on it, and you would never in a million years imagine that this seven and a half percent grade was once a railroad. Oh. But there Hard it is. To believe, There's but there proof it is. positive. Wow. It was a railroad. Now, at the base of Baxter Pass is Atchee, and this was sort of the heart of the railroad. It's where the engine shops were. Oh, that's cool. And the machine shop is still here. Wow, it's and still standing. It's the only thing here. Wow. There aren't even spikes or ties or anything left because everybody comes to Atchee, and everybody has picked up anything lying around. But there were houses and buildings. Oh, wow. it, was, it was the hub of activity on the railroad. And, and when I say hub of activity, uh, keep in mind there never was a lot of activity. <laughs> it's a teeny little railroad. and Well, yeah. This was the middle of nowhere, but keep in mind the whole railroad was the middle of nowhere. Exactly. You, you travel there now and you wonder why they built their engine shops there. Well, there, Mac, it doesn't matter. Everything was the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Yeah, this is true. <laughs> they, they also ran some shays, which seemed to make sense, but they wanted to run rod engines like this one because they could go faster. Oh. And those big articulated engines were kind of halfway between the two. It gave them a chance to go a little faster and still get up those impossible grades. Right. To get this. This was a place called the Black Dragon Mine. Oh, my. In the Uinta Basin, and this is where they mined gilsonite. Gilsonite. Gilsonite, which is really just solid oil. <laughs> yes. It's, it's sort of like petrified oil. When they first found it, they thought it was coal, mm -hmm. and they tried burning it. A blacksmith oh, <laughs> is rumored to have burned it in his forge, and the whole thing melted uh. and set fire to his building. Oh, gee. <laughs> But here's the, the Black Dragon today. Yes, like all mines, of course, it played out. This is what the Black Dragon looks like today. They're not mining it. But they're sure mining gilsonite in other locations wow. out here. This is also an abandoned mine, but a much more modern mine. Right. And you can see that they followed the seam all the way down about 800 feet. Oh, my. But these things are just open on the top and just giant cracks in the ground full of oil. Wow. They loaded the gilsonite into sacks, about 200 to 250 pounds per sack. Really? And then they shipped it that way rather than in open cars. It hmm. seems the stuff is actually quite valuable. Oh. <laughs> and so they wanted to protect it. It's also filthy. You see the miners and they're just black yeah, with oil handling it, oh, that's how they transported my. it yeah in grand junction there's the cross orchard museum and uh -huh. we popped over there they right. were they were closed they were closed <laughs> <laughs> and they told us to get lost uh, we uh we did not get lost no. we got permission from the next door neighbor to shoot over the fence there you go uh we never would trespass never. no we did not no nope. uh -uh. anyway uh, they've got a lot of really neat Uinta equipment here at the Cross Orchard Museum, which opens apparently on Memorial Day. Of course, everything else. <laughs> so we were there early. This is interesting. For some reason, they put their brake lines above the couplers instead of below where everybody else put them. Uh, maybe the manager had a back problem. I, I don't know. Easy to get to. <laughs> it's neat because, yeah, you can just grab these things. They're right there about shoulder high mm. instead of being down at your knees when right. you got to crawl around and risk life and limb hooking yeah. up the brakes. <laughs> but here on the flat cars that they would throw the sacks onto, the sacks of gilsonite, they had to put a little stanchion at the end of every car to hold up the brake line. Okay. They have a reasonable collection of stuff here. There's a little bit in Golden, Colorado, but mostly it's right here in Grand Junction. Oh, you're going to go that way with it, huh? Well, I was so inspired, I decided to dig out my uh, LGB Uinta Mali. Oh, wow. It's been in the box up here in the loft, as, as people following the channel know. A lot of stuff was stored here at Garage Mahal and hasn't been unboxed, and... Well, the Mali hasn't been unboxed since I bought it decades ago. And it was ago. on the bottom of the pile. <laughs> so we're pulling it out, and we're going to pull it out, and at some point we're going to build a railroad, and we're going to actually play with it. Oh, my. But here it is. It's a 122 scale, 
When I first saw one of these, I thought that they'd missed the scale. I thought it's just way too small. No, it's just a teeny, teeny little engine. The prototype was small. Right. But here you can see how the, the articulation worked to get it around those insane curves. Oh, my. Isn't that neat a how that A locomotive works? with hinges. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's really cool. And you can see I've placed it here next to a Colorado and Southern mogul. And such a teeny little tea kettle of a mogul, and yet it looks giant compared to this Mally. Oh, my goodness. These wow. Mallies were just really small. Wow. Looked so nice out, I figured I'd leave it out of course. and put it on a shelf. <laughs> and we needed to find some place for all of our Uinta rust. Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? I love going out and collecting rust. Oh, yes. Look at this. They, they only use tie plates on the switches, but here's one of those. And it says Uinta Railroad right on it. I guess oh, they cast cool. their own uh, you know, tie plates. I guess something. so. Look at that. So we shoved a couple of our spikes through and this little piece of rail that we got. Is that just cool? That is just way cool. And, and I imagine uh, those neat locomotives rolling across that light little piece of rail. And there it is now in Garage Mahal. So we've enshrined it here next to a, a switch stand <laughs> right course. by the door out to the, to the garage, the speed shop, as we say. <laughs> And I put the uh, Mally locomotive up on the shelf mm. here just above the switch stand. The so special shelf. We now have our Uinta Museum all set up. There we go. So that is the Uinta Railroad. That was fun. We should, we should go up over the pass one of these days. I went up there with Steve, but you haven't been up there. And no. I'd love to show no. you that grade. And, right. Uh, Morro Castle, wow. it's just, uh, just impossible be to fun. believe that people took narrow gauge trains up there and Mallys yes, along yes, yeah. up over that incredible hill mm -hmm. to get the Gilsonite out of Uinta Basin and back to Mac oh, down gosh. here at the Rio Grande and wow. connect with the Rio Grande. It's just amazing. phenomenal, phenomenal yes. railroad. Right. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Well, if you, if you haven't been over to the channel, do pop over to the mm -hmm. channel. While you're going over there, if you liked this movie, do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends right. because that encourages us <laughs> to do our best possible right. work yes. and not be all slovenly and weird and stuff, which we would never, we would do, never that. do that. No. Anyway, give us a thumbs up. It, it encourages us. It's like yes. the little gold star we used yes. to get in school. Attaboys. And attaboys. And positive reinforcements. Yeah. Positive yeah. reinforcements. So anyway, if you haven't been over to the channel, mm -hmm. pop over to the channel and look at the other 195, I think. Oh, yes, getting close to 200. Getting really close to 200 we'll have a movies. 200 celebration. We will have a big party and we will invite you. To Absolutely. So that'll be really <laughs> cool. And if you're not a subscriber, do subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. No. Right? It just puts you down as somebody who likes mm -hmm. our movies right. and lets you be notified when we upload one. Mm -hmm. So you get a little. A little blip on your cell phone or something mm -hmm. that says, hey, Toy Man just uploaded yes. a movie. At any rate, the easy way to subscribe is to click on the infamous blue button mm -hmm. appearing just now. Zoink! Zoink right mm -hmm. here. Blue button says subscribe. Click on that. That will make you a subscriber. Take you to the channel uh -huh. so you can watch all these other movies. Right. Well, we're mm -hmm. not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here again next week with some more massive screwing around. <laughs> we'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.